two things this morning on the drive so far that has been all of 17 minutes. When someone is allowing another human on the highway and they do this with their hand, it's really hard to see that in the side mirror. So I noticed someone allowing someone to come over and they were motioning with their hand. It's really hard to see that in a mirror. Now the mirrors we have on our truck, it's not that big a deal because I can see a whole lot of things. But depending on the sunshine angle and the sky angle and all the lights and all the things, it makes it very difficult to see that. So flashlights, that makes life much easier. The second thing is, it's called a merge lane or it's called a on-ramp or a deceleration lane or an acceleration lane some combination of those things on all the on and off ramps. Mostly what I'm concerned with right now is the acceleration and deceleration aspect of this lane. What's most frustrating is that when people will stop in the traffic lane to allow someone to come over or go from highway speed to half that in short order just so they can let somebody in when this person in the acceleration lane fails to accelerate. That's all for now. Brad Rant. Here we go. Good morning, Blair. Good morning. Coupler good. Wiring on now. Lights function. Chains on. Tone jack up. Mirrors adjusted. Not yet. Fire for seatbelt on. No, I added that, did you? Check. Gains on the floor. We're headed to Airstream of Virginia for a bit of warranty service this morning because last week we had a hellacious thunderstorm, buckets of rain and wind. And inside of our main closet, we had a little bit of water seepage. seepage. I had noticed the water seepage before. I just thought it was because it's where we keep our kettle on the top of the phone. Mm-hmm. And I thought maybe some had spilled up there. That was my initial thought too. And then I saw the drip forming on the ceiling. We believe it's from where they installed our third solar panel. I got up on the roof and inspected when I was cleaning the other day. I didn't notice anything drastic. It all looks good. So Blair's going to have to drive home because I have to work from my computer today. So what are the maintenance issues or construction defects that we have noticed? Just minor stuff. Like there's some seams that are a little separated or uneven. one of the wheel well cabinets that we keep some spices in so that's something I'm overly concerned about. Now the bathroom door is tight so it feels like it sticks but it's just tight. And FYI this really sucks. I can't even drink in this room. <laughs> This is the prescription. I can't talk and do this right now because I'm too focused on not drifting. 
so we're gonna have to do this a little bit later, like an hour into the trip. What's happening here, Blair? Making some dinner. What you making? Bacon wrapped chicken. Bacon wrapped chicken. Yeah. Bacon wrapped chicken thighs. Tenders. No. Mm. What else you put on it? Some spicy paprika. Some paprika, some garlic salt, some pepper. Look what. Regular salt. So we had a repair done today. Tell me all about it. So on a rainy day last week, we realized that our pantry was leaking through here um, onto all this stuff. And we took it in to get it repaired. So they took down the speaker, got a look in here, checked all our insulation, repaired the caulking up on the roof. Hopefully there's a big rainstorm tonight. So hopefully it doesn't leak tonight. They're pretty fast with the repair. Quick and easy. Efficient. Yeah, like an hour. In and out within an hour. From the time that we got there till it was done. And then we waited an hour for it to cure. Yep. So. Yeah, it was good. Nothing but good things. And then you got nervous on the highway. And then I took the first trip on the highway with the Airstream. Uh, 35 miles or so. Wasn't bad. Until you missed the exit. Until I missed. No. Brad told me to take the wrong exit. No, I did not. You told me to take 64 West and we needed 64 East. They can wrap chicken. Cool. It's what's for dinner. <laughs> so a few weeks ago, somebody decided they weren't going to stop in time and run into the back of my truck. Uh, caused a little scuff. The steel bumper helped out quite a bit. Just a little paint scratch was really all it was and a little scratch on the plastic. But I did 600 and some odd dollars worth of damage. Thankfully they had good insurance and I will tell you I am very impressed with State Farm car insurance. I don't have them, I don't use them, but I, I would. Uh, based on the customer satisfaction and customer service that I had from them in order to get this truck repaired. I called them right away after the young man gave me his insurance card and they said, yes, sir, we're right on it. And they called me back within an hour and said, here are your options for repair. Here are your options for a rental car while it's being repaired. And we took it over to a place called One Stop Auto and they had excellent customer service and were done faster than they had promised. So. Uh, very happy with the repair, very happy with the customer service all around, and here's a view of what it looked like before and after. Outside's clean, roof's clean. I actually got up on the roof a little bit, cleaned it up as well in addition to the ladder that I use. But I think what some people fail to realize or fail to think about when you hand wash and touch every part of your rig is that you get to see every part of your rig. You notice the little rust spots, you notice the little dings, you notice the little things that are going wrong with it. And the more you do that, the more you are familiar with it and the more you can notice the changes in it as you drive down the highway and the flexing and the wind and the bumps and all the things you hit and all the places you park you get to see more and know more about your rig. So I encourage at least every three months, every quarter of the year, hand wash it, touch it yourself. I do take it through a car wash, the, the one where you have to hand wash it yourself with a little spray hose, pressure wash. I do that on most every trip that we have, but every three months or so, I actually get out the rags and I hand wash it like you saw today. This product, I'm not sponsored whatsoever by Aero Cleaner. I've used it on every rig that I've ever owned. Uh, this, again, being the fourth one, if you want to wear. I've been happy with the product. It cleans all the surfaces. Uh, I have not used the Walburnize waxing on the Airstream yet. I will do that at, a, at the regularly scheduled intervals. This is just my cleaning. So every trip we take, I take it to a car wash, and then once a quarter, I take the rags out and I touch all the parts of the Airstream. I do an interior cleaning every week. I wash the tanks every week. Um, and I just check it out. I, I make sure all the uh, operational, I check everything every week. 
I check all the electronics, all the awnings, all the windows, all the seals. Um, I touch everything most weeks inside and I touch everything outside every month or so just to check because I think it's a good thing to do. So if you have any questions, so please hit us up on our website, ask questions, or send us an email directly at 13adventures at gmail.com. I want to take a quick minute to talk about maintenance records. So this truck that we have is a 2017 F-350. This is the first year that this body style came out. And I was one of the first adopters and first people to have one of this body style truck. I've been thoroughly happy with the truck for the most part. There's been some minor issues with the sunroof. Um, and a few other recalls, but outside of that, it's been a really good truck and it's pulled some very heavy loads around a lot of miles around this country. So I've been, I've been happy. One thing that we have had a persistent issue with is been the diesel particulate filter. When the truck was a few months old, maybe six months old, I was in the middle of Yellowstone National Park and the truck just quit running and we had it towed to the nearest Ford dealership, which was Pocatello, Idaho, I believe, and you know some hours away, so it took forever to get there, but uh, they had to keep it for four or five days to figure out what it was, and it was a clogged filter. The regeneration cycle that's supposed to happen and get the exhaust super hot to burn off that, uh, burn off the particulate, just, I don't know, didn't work. Then fast forward, six or eight months i would notice some black smoke come out for a day or two and then it would be fine and then pulling the trailer somewhere in oregon or washington state i can't recall which now but like i couldn't maintain speed with cruise control on i notice every time i go up a hill like it felt like it had no no air or no oxygen and you know change in altitude and things like that can sometimes sometimes affect it but I could push the gas and get it to catch up, but the, the cruise control was always the key indicator. So I took it to a fourth place. They did a manual regen. It was fine. And then the same thing happened a, a month or so later somewhere in California. And then the same thing happened as we come across the country. Again, an hour or so would be an, an issue, and then it would go away. Well, Blair and I were in Shenandoah Park, as you may have seen the video a few weeks ago, and coming off the mountain, I had some sluggish power. I noticed the tailpipe was very black with soot, and I could see exhaust coming out as we drove, drove down the highway. I also noticed that my diesel exhaust fluid gauge had not dropped very much, so that tells me something was wrong with the system. This truck has 51-ish thousand miles. I don't, 50, close to 52,000 now, I guess. So I took it to the Ford place locally, and they said I needed a new diesel exhaust filter. Now that's like a four foot section of this pipe. And at a cost of a meager $5,100 is what the whole thing cost to get it installed. So I said, I've had multiple issues with this thing. Uh, I've talked to the Ford, um, sell Ford service representative. She was exceptionally helpful and very nice and she said well let me contact Ford I said I've got all my paperwork so every time I take it in for service particularly on a new vehicle I get the receipt and I get the exact service that was done on my vehicle and I keep it in a folder which stays in the vehicle and I've done that with every vehicle I've ever owned and I think it's a smart way to do stuff you would assume that Ford Motor Company if it's service is done at a Ford dealership that Ford Motor Company could go in and look and see what was done at every service interval, but I found that not to be the case. She reached out to Ford. They came back and said, we need to know that every service has been done in the last two years. 
and they asked a couple of other questions. So I was able to produce every service writing and every service thing that I've ever had done at a Ford dealership because it's been done at six different ones because we spend a lot of time on the road. So this public service announcement is out there to tell all of you who may be on full time on the road, if you do have maintenance on your vehicle at a dealership, please keep the records because they're, they're not all connected, surprisingly. Well, it's going to be a warranty job somehow because I've, I've done it all at a Ford dealership and it's been a noted issue for a while. So uh, I, I can't get an appointment for a couple of weeks and they had to order the parts too. So I will follow up and see what happens once the appointment is made. But just as a announcement to everyone out there who owns a vehicle, a new vehicle specifically, if you are getting a service at a dealership or you have issues with it, take it to a dealership and keep the records because it may come back to help you in the future like it did me because this exhaust system is already past its uh, warranty phase but because i've had multiple issues with it ford has done the right thing i believe and decided that they would pay for it anyway, i will follow up in a few weeks with um, what's happened on the ford diesel particulate filter system